Hello, this short video blog today is about life insurance. To discuss life insurance further with a qualified and experienced advisor, you can call myself, Paul Hodson, on 086 102 6532 for a no obligation consultation. Now, there's several questions to ask yourself about life insurance. The first being, what is it? Life insurance should be considered part of all financial plans. At a time when your family is coming to grips with the loss of you or your spouse, or both of you, the added pressure of financial concerns can be reduced with adequate life insurance cover. It provides financial security in the form of a lump sum payment upon death, which can be used to eliminate family and or business debt and can provide the means for meeting day-to-day -day living expenses. Now the second question that you need to ask yourself is do I actually need the cover? Anybody who has financial dependence such as a spouse or children who will be financially impacted if they die needs life insurance. If your family relies on you to earn an income and you die prematurely your income will no longer be available to provide shelter, transportation, food, clothing and education for your family. Have you thought about how your family or your partner would cope financially if you died unexpectedly? What about if your spouse were to die prematurely? How would you do the things that he or she did? Example, care for children in the home. When you have life insurance, you have the peace of mind of knowing that in this tragic situation, those who depend on you will not be financially disadvantaged with the burden of maintaining living standards and keeping up loan repayments. If you were to die prematurely, life insurance can protect your family from the loss of your income. The third question to ask yourself is how much cover is enough? Well, a good starting point is at least 10 times your annual income in life insurance cover. Some people actually need a lot more. The factors which influence the amount of cover you need include, but they're not limited to, your income, the amount of debt you have, your age and the age of your dependents, your total debt burden, the amount of assets which may be sold on your death, and also your spouse's willingness to work after you die. Insurance proceeds can be invested to generate an income stream. For example, $500,000 invested at 5% per annum would generate $25,000 of potentially taxable income per annum, which could be used by your family. The fourth question is how do I get the cover? Well, you can purchase life insurance as a standalone policy or you can obtain it through many superannuation funds. Each method has its advantages and disadvantages, so it's important to speak with a qualified and experienced financial advisor before making a decision about which method to use. You can also purchase life insurance cover via online services or directly from insurers who advertise on the TV. While you may or may not get a cheaper premium, you may be buying a substandard product, so beware. The next question, and the question that a lot of people ask at the beginning, is how much will it cost? Well, some cover is always better than none, and life insurance premiums depend on, amongst other things, the amount of cover that you are seeking, more cover equals higher premium, your age, the older you are, the higher the premium, the younger you are, the, the lower the premium, your occupation, white collar workers have lower premiums generally uh, than some uh, blue collar workers. Your smoking status stands to reason that smokers pay a higher premium and also the premium structure that you choose, stepped or level. Stepped basically means that the premiums get higher as you age and level means they don't. Your general health at the time of your application can also impact on the premium cost. Purchasing your cover through a superannuation fund can be more tax effective but there's some, there are some traps that you need to be aware of. Some insurers offer discounts for two or more lives which are packaged together and they also offer other package discounts such as when you're combining different types of cover together. To give you an example, in July 2011, $1 million of life cover for a 35-year-old non-smoker, white-collar worker male with a major insurance company in Australia could cost as little as $50 a month. Now, as I said, there are some traps to be aware of. Some policies offered by credit card companies or directly 
to consumers via TV ads use gimmicks to lure you in. They may also have onerous exclusions such as no coverage while you're overseas, exclusions for pre-existing medical conditions, exclusions for sporting incidents, and they can sometimes cover accidental death only. And 90% of death claims are not for accidents, according to AMP. If you have life insurance, it's important to know that your claim will be paid by the insurer if you die. Beware of low quality products. Important note, buying your insurance through a licensed financial advisor will cost you no more than buying it directly from the insurer. Now if you'd like to learn more, you can call me Paul Hodson on 08 6102 6532. Thank you.